Okay, here we go. Uh, 348, unit 14 in our books. And I will tell you after ELW 112, in ELW 112, we're gonna be using the electrical studies for Trey's book. And we will be starting to use the guidebook for cablemen and linemen. So I'll show you that one right here. Uh, this book also is going to be coming into play. So make sure you've got that book also either online or in hard copy. Okay, I'm in the first paragraph here. We're going to talk about uh, discuss the difference between a true three-phase transformer and a three-phase transformer bank. Recognize delta and Y connected transformer windings. Calculate three-phase transformer values and make a three-phase connection through three single-phase transformers. Uh, a lot emphasis is gonna be put on the bottom one. Uh, it, it's really gonna be evident out there when you guys graduate from our courses and there's a lot of them being built out there in the field today. Making and constructing a three-phase bank out of three single-phase transformers because the guy on the ground and the guy that eventually climbs the pole has to have a working knowledge of how these are constructed and you guys are going to be the constructors. Okay, a true three-phase transformer contains three separate transformers, three separate transformers wound on a single core. The advantage of this arrangement is that a single core permits better magnetic coupling among the separate windings creating a higher efficiency than that possible with a transformer bank. The disadvantage is that a single transformer should fail, the entire transformer must be repaired or replaced. A pad mounted three phase transformer is shown in figure 14 2. Uh, you're looking at, and you, if you look at 14 1 above, you'll see the concept here. Now, I don't particularly like the way they've got the primary and secondary windings pointed out in that graphic right there. That's one of two cores. How many different cores are you going to have to have in a transformer? A primary core and a secondary core, right. Uh, I don't know if they're trying to refer to both of them look the same, it's just a difference in windings. But you'll notice now, instead of using one square, when I had a primary and secondary winding, now I'm using two squares and three separate windings that of course, how, what, what is the benefit of using that magnetic core that's coupled between all three? What does it do to the magnetic field? It, it I, like, isolates it or focuses it. It focuses it, yes, absolutely. The magnetic field is gonna flow the path of the core. So it, it definitely focuses it and shares it between all three phases. The pad mounted now, that's really a substation transform when you look at it, a pad mounted three-phase transformer first is, and I'll get some uh, pictures going around here. How can I tell in a transformer that is three-phase? What's going to be the primaries? The, is it the primaries on the top? Uh, yes. Primaries and secondary. Oh, the secondaries are the small ones on the top. Yeah, it's going to be... Uh, your high voltage is going to be on, on top and the uh, secondary, it, depending on the transformer itself, depending on where it comes out at, I mean, it could be anywhere. So, I mean, you're going to look at, and I'll show you this uh, photograph right here. Let me share my screen. Mr. V, did you get my message? Um, yeah, hang on one sec. Yes, I see it. All right, thanks. Okay. And you'll notice in this one uh, right here, that's a three phase and it's a, it's a pad mount transformer. You, you set it on the ground. And we'll talk underground a little bit different here. How many high voltage bushings do I have? Three. Three. How many, how many low voltage? You see these are much smaller? One, um, two, three, how many? Four. Four, four. okay. Four. And, you know, this is a good indicator right here of what kind of transformer, as far as the configuration is. These are things to look out for. <clears throat> All right, so I've got three primaries. 
coming in here. Is this Delta or Y? Um, Y. Three primaries. That's Delta because I don't Delta. know. Delta because I don't have the neutral. You don't see a neutral bushing over here, do you? All right, so it's delta inbound, delta configuration inbound. What is it outbound? One, two, three primary. Wow. There you go. There you go, gentlemen. Good job. Now I have a neutral right here on the side. So that'll give you a good indication of what's your primary side and what type, delta, and your secondary side for three phases and the neutral in Y. Okay, good. Uh, glad to hear you guys jumping on that one real quick. All right, transformer banks. I'm at the bottom of page 349. A three-phase transformer bank is made of connecting the windings of individual single-phase transformers in a three-phase connection, figure 14-3. Now, these figures that we're going to be going through here, it gets, how do you want to put it, Professor Vermelin? Confusing? Yeah. <laughs> it gets confusing. Uh, what we're going to do here, we're going to talk about, you know, the Y and Delta configuration and what they look like actually at their field. We're going to provide you drawings in ELW 112 tomorrow that you're actually able to go by and get a better concept and a better visual on how three-phase banks uh, uh, work. Let me go back here. So... Let's go and in your searches, this is gonna be uh, easier to do. Three phase, all right, open, uh, close Delta Bank, or let's do, say Y Bank. As soon as you, when I put three phase transformer, it's gonna bring up three phase transformers that are encased all in one compartment. And you'll notice the one I had before was three phase, this is three phase, that's three phase, all of the windings in the core is in one box. As soon as I put three-phase bank, those are individual transformers constructed and wired to be three-phase. Here's a great example. All right, share screen. Now, what I have done, instead of having everything constructed and inside one container, one uh, metal box of three-phase, now when I type in three-phase bank and do a search on that, what do I have? Transformers. Transformers, individual transformers. That's a bank of transformers. I've got one, two, three transformers in this bank. Now, there's no wiring configuration going on here yet. The wiring is how you make it open delta, close delta, or Y. But I just want to let you know the difference between the two. One is self-contained, and that's what they mean by a true three-phase transformer. That's when the uh, one in the first paragraph of 348. And then the one that you're looking at, 14-3, even though the wiring configuration in it is in it, this is three separate transformers that we're talking about. Now, do you remember when we spoke about the Y configuration and the Delta configuration as far as the drawing was concerned? Yeah. What did that look like? Is, and I'll bring up a paint screen here. Delta was a triangle and uh, right. Y was kind of like a like a triangle, but instead of going around. Like a Mercedes symbol. Right. Yeah. Point, point. There, are, there, uh, were different, there were different configurations as far as, you know, the shape of it. But I want, want you guys, well, you know what, Professor V? I found my pen about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> and it's gone again. It's gone again? I can do it by mouse here. All right, so I'm sharing. Uh, are you seeing a share screen? Yes, sir. A paint, okay. So uh, what, you, what you have in the Y configuration. We can see the transformers, not the paint. Transformers, not, the, okay. So let me stop that and share. Mm -hmm. 
Let me start this year. Uh, ink. Share. Okay, and I will probably be dragging uh, windows back and forth. Mm -hmm. So in the Y configuration, why am I not drawing here? Okay, so in the Y configuration, we had this squiggly line. I'm doing pretty good for a mouse. Yeah. This. <laughs> okay, that and this. That. We also came off to the side here, and I like to do this so it doesn't confuse. Grounded. Okay. Think of this configuration, gentlemen, when you're looking at the Y configuration, is that this is a phase? This is a phase, and this is a phase, and this is neutral and ground. So in the transformers, when I have my transformer configuration, now look at the top of this. I'll drag this over to you. You should be seeing my transformer screen now, correct? No. Still seeing paint. Still seeing paint? Yep. Okay, hold on one second. Screen two. Yep. Okay, you see it now? Yeah. All right. Think of each one of these phases right here in the Y configuration, and this is how you're really going to be able to observe it when you're out there in the field and build it, as this is one transformer. I know it went away. I'll bring it back. And the primary bushing is phase to ground. This is one transformer and the primary bushing is phase to ground. And this is one transformer. And the primary bushing is phase to ground. All right, so I'll bring that screen back. So you notice I have three transformers right here. One, and we'll go just go ahead, one, two, Three. Three transformer one is it's on the primary side. And when we do these drawing, that's that's always the primary, not secondary. Okay. H1 and H2, H1 and H2, H1 and H2, those are at the top of the transformer. I have A phase where I'm coming off my overhead primary line, B phase where I'm coming off my overhead primary line, and C phase where I'm coming off my overhead primary line. So that satisfies. A, B, and C. I'm trying to get you guys to see how the schematic drawing matches up with the actual, what you're seeing out there. All right, to make this work correctly and work correctly in your rotation, you'll notice that this phase, the first one here, the first one here, and the first one here, are all using the same bushing. Well, what do I mean by that? When wiring the transformer bank, and this is a Y configuration, if I go, I've got to go from A phase to H1, I've got to go from B phase in the next transformer to H1, and I've got to go from C phase from this transformer over to H1. I'll repeat that again. All phases in a Y bank and delta bank, when you're coming off the primary phase, you've got to match all three transformers to the same primary bushing. Does that also mean, can I go from A to H2, B to H2, and C to H2? Will that work also? Yes. Sure, as long as you're using all three of the same. But how do you know which one's which? Which one's H1, which one's H2? Yeah. All right, just by the photo that you're looking at right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, whenever you face a transformer, 
All overhead transformers, the left hand bushing is H1 and the right hand bushing is H2. What would be the outcome if you didn't do it that way? Well, depending on the transformer, you got to what in these banks, and you'll notice do all three of these transformers look the same? Yes. Yeah. You're going to try to get, in all cases, same companies, same brands, same size transformers for a Y bank. All right. If you did, do get an oddball transformer, and uh, this is really rare out there, that has a different polarity in it, then you're going to have to swap bushings on this. What is the effect if I take and I move, uh, say I'll put this one to H1, I'll put the second one to H2, and I'll put third to H1. This is A, B, and C. Uh, you could probably answer that question on your own. Is it going to make anything break? No. What's it going to do with the rotation? Everything's going to be backwards. There you go. It just shows you it's another point for, for you to be able to change rotation. That's all, that's all it's really going to do to you. It's going to make, if your primary phases are A, B, C, it's going to make your phases, it's going to make your rotation go backwards. Now, Paul, you bring up something, and, you know, it, it kind of helps the beginning uh, lineman and even the experienced one out there in the world. Uh, Professor V can attest to this, too. You're not always going to go back to, especially in a treble call or a storm or whatever the case may be, you're not going to go back to the same work that you did. You're always going to be coming up on somebody that constructed something maybe last year, maybe 20 years ago, is that if you stick to a certain standard out there, and not only for your company, but for multiple companies, then when you drive up on a YY bank, like that you're looking here, and you work for Ori Electric, and for some reason you got to go work for Santee Cooper for a while, you know the standard between utilities is on a YY bank, I go H1, H1, H1 on the primary bushings. Right. That's just a good no, thing to know. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, they build it in the same way. Duke Energy, how do you do it? That's right. You do it in the – everybody does in that same standard. Okay. Uh, and then now that I've got my primary feed into H1, B, H1, and C, H1, where, what do I do with H2? Well, what's happening with the other, that's the H1 bushing. That's the H1, excuse me, that's the H1 bushing for A. That's the H1 bushing for B. That's the H1 bushing for C. What do I do with H2? What's happening in the diagram? You ground them all. You ground it. I just take a piece of copper wire over to the pole, and I put it at the pole ground, and I H2 pole ground, H2 pole ground, H2 pole ground. There you go. You now know the primary configuration of a YY bank. The thing I want you to get the, the knowledge of right here is knowing when you look at your delta diagram and when you look at your diagram, how it directly correlates with a bank of transformers. You know, when, if you've got something that's three phase self-contained, it, it's, it's like ready-made. That first picture that I showed you of that three phase transformer, pad mount transformer, you can't change it. it, it if it's a YY transformer, it's gonna stay YY forever. You can't go inside the tank and change it. If it's Delta Y, you can't change that either. When you bank three individual transformers, you can build from scratch. You can make any kind of bank that you want to because now you can configure it in any shape or form that you want to. Does that make sense? How, how would you go about doing that on a pole right there? Like putting them three transformers up there. We'll talk more than in the construction part of it. They make a mount. They make what they call a cluster mount. Hold on one second. Yeah. Are you seeing my... Uh, that screen right there? Yeah. Yeah. All right, hold on one second. Let's see if we do a Google search. Paul, you asked this question, didn't you? Bridge. Oh, wow. Yeah, a while back while I was at the field. Yeah, that's guy, right. You guys had one set up. All down uh, all. Let's go to images. I thought I saw one in the 
You see, every, anything over a single phase as a, as a mountain bracket. Yeah, that's for an underground dip. That's kind of one there, but it's for one transformer. Yeah, that's an oldie. Now, oh, there you go. That's for a, yeah. a smaller size transformer, but they do have different configuration. Mm -hmm. You have what they call a three-phase cluster mount. And you'll wrap it. You see these two bolts right here? Let's see if I get this image. It's kind of small. All right, well, that's not that bad. It's kind of yeah. blurry, though. Okay. And you'll take these bolts apart that are right here, wrap it around the pole, bolt it to the pole, and there's also a, a bolt that you can put through right here that'll hold it up. All right? It kind of, it pushes the transformers away from the pole, so you have a little bit more clearance, and then the transformer just mounts on these bolts that are on the cluster. Uh, Paul had asked uh, before too, and you know it was a great question. Can you just drill six holes through the pole and mount three transformers to the pole? I've seen it a couple times, but man, when you start drilling that many holes into the middle of a pole, you're really starting to degrade the pole's integrity. I got a, I got a picture of a um, transformer bank on a cluster mount. Excellent. I'm stopping. Go ahead. Share screen. that perfect is it getting any bigger there you oh go. yeah that's perfect yep that that's what now when i started you know in the business we did a bunch of banks like that you know three pot banks where we just drilled the poles out and then we moved to the cluster mount brackets like professor shoemaker showed but that's this is just another example of how you can um, hang these pots on the pole. You can adjust these brackets out to fit. Um, these are what hundreds look like, maybe. They look pretty hefty, yeah. So that I mean that that bracket that's on the pole is all aluminum. It's a very lightweight bracket, but it can hold a ton of weight on the pole. But it's great to keep the transformers off the poles. Um, but you know, that, that's what most companies use these days. Yeah, leave your picture there. You'll notice, and uh, if you can drag your mouse over it, right in the middle of the cluster right there, it's right adjustable. Yeah, right So you notice, you notice you're able to expand or retract those uh, Up and brackets down. right there that you hang your transformers on. You know, it's got to be in 100s. Look at the size of the distance between the two yeah. mounting brackets. Uh, and then e even with that, you're able to flip them around. So, I mean, you can adjust them to all size brackets of your transformers. Yep. And uh, guys, I mean, those things, I mean, they're expensive. Yeah. A cluster, just the cluster mount itself is very, very expensive. Yeah. So you're looking at three 100 kVA transformers, and I'll just give an estimate here. What, you're thinking about 2,000 pounds a piece? Probably. Yeah, you're yeah. looking at about, you're looking at about three tons on that pole right there mounted. Yeah. And what you talked about earlier about, you know, three different kinds of transformers, that, that to me looks like there's two, the same two transformers manufactured on one side and the transformer on the left is a different one. So, it sure does. It's got that cooling radiator on it. So you got don't see it. You'll see it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, why you still got that picture right there, down below the one different type of transformers. I don't think that's a connection right there. Is that a donut? Uh, yeah. You yeah, sure are. Yeah. So we got current transformers on this transformer bank to be able to step down the amperage and get a meter reading off the transformer bank. That's a great picture, my man. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Great question, and uh, thank you, Professor V. That was a great illustration right there. All right, uh, that's a good time to take a break. It's about 9.42. Let's say we'll be back at 9.55 to make it a good round number. Let's take a break, gentlemen. It's 9.55, so we should all be back. Uh, we got about, we'll do just a little bit more here, then we'll start getting into what we're going to go over as far as the, uh, 
test is concerned. Just want to give you the basics right here. And the nice thing that's about going on in this process is you guys is the identification of what kind of transformer bank are you looking at when uh, when you're doing a drive by or when you're just looking at a transformer configuration so both and there's I'm going to add one here for you in just a moment here of a different configuration let me bring my paint up all right let me get this over here Wow, oh, new, I found my pen, yay. So let's go to a share screen here. <clears throat> then we'll do screen two, share. All right, you should see my paint screen up there, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna do the Y configuration first. My line's right. Oh yeah, this is much easier. Yeah. Come over here, ground it. Okay, and looking at the configuration as far as the diagram for it, how many transformers are in this bank? Three. Three. One two, three. Okay, let's do delta. How many transformers are in this bank? Three. One, two, three. I'm going to include a new one here because this is the uh, you, there's three different types of configurations, Y, Delta, and Open Delta. They do say out there in the world, and I've, I've never seen one. Have you ever seen an Open Y? No. no, I've never seen one. You can build one in configuration, but it's almost never used. But the other common one here is, this. Now, how many transformers are in this bank? Three. Two. Careful. Two. Two. One, two. And the, uh -huh. right? Delta in this one, and typically you'll add, hear the term closed delta, is because obviously all three sides are closed. Open delta, I don't have the third transformer. Now, there's, there's reasons behind both the delta and the closed delta. Delta, when you have a delta bank of three different types transformers, you have a high single phase, and I'm gonna start using the phase symbol, that's the phase symbol. High single phase and a high three phase load. The load to whatever you're trying to feed there has both a high single phase and a high three phase load, all right? I don't need that in every instance, and I'll give you a good example. Who's been to Oliver's there in Red Hill for lunch? Yes, sir. Okay, you go to Oliver's. Oliver's uh, on the inside, it's got some lights on the inside. All of his grills are grass, uh, grills are grass. Right. Grills are gas, so he's using gas on the inside. But he does have, and if you've been in there in the summertime, he keeps that place at a frosty 68 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. That place is cold, cold. He's got one. Yeah. He's got one three-phase air conditioner. Air conditioner unit. He keeps it cold. So his single-phase load is not that big. It's the phase symbol again, and his three-phase load is somewhat small. Only one AC. So he doesn't need as much three-phase power in his business. That's why he uses an open delta bank. It's just not required that he have the third transformer, All right? So what is why? Why are we gonna use, why, why? Why are we gonna use why in those configurations? One is both this, Cope Lowe's Delta and open delta means, and my electricians that are in here probably attest to that, 
means that I also have to have a Delta configured motor, which is typically nowadays, all the motors that you get are brand new. You can actually do that on the inside of the motor. Just take a cover off and configure it. And it shows you really easily. If you watch Professor Granger over there at his golf course, he's got that motor that feeds the uh, pond. Now that's, he's got it wired right now, configured for single phase. That motor can be rewired for Y, it can be re rewired for closed delta, it can be rewired for open delta, just by opening a panel and doing it inside, whatever's configured. So the equipment inside your business has to match whatever's being provided to you. The Y configuration is pretty much a balance of single phase and three phase both my single phase load and my three phase load that are inside that business, whatever it is right there, is a balance of both single phase and three phase. When I say load in these, config, in these three different types of configuration, what am I really talking about? How much power the customers are gonna be using? Yes, the amount of power in amps. You know, we talk about amps all the time. We talk about load and current amps. The customer's going to be using. So we'll give some different instances here. Open Delta, we already got kind of the situation that goes for that. Some single phase power, only one three phase motor. That's Oliver's. Uh, give me a, an, an idea here. Where, where would be a good place where I'd use closed Delta of a location that you're, that you're familiar with? I always use this one all the time. Cam4. What's out of Cam4? A lot of three phase. Tons and tons of motors out there, all right? So their three phase load, their three phase amperage is going to be high, and they've got a good bit of single phase too. I mean, they got some uh, cookers out there and, and lights and whatnot, so they're going to need the benefit of closed delta. All right, why we really haven't talked about I'll give you some examples right here. Uh, the college. All right, the transformers that are sitting around the building at the college, it's a balanced amount of load between both single phase and three phase. Uh, those are Y configurations. Pretty much all of your restaurants, it's a balance of single phase and three phase. So they're using Y type transformers. So that just gives you the instance of what situation I'm going to use, what kind of uh, Three phase configuration for. Remember, always at the tip of the tip of the sphere here, your company is going to be looking for one efficiency and two cost effectiveness. I'm not going to throw three transformers in a closed delta bank in a situation where the customer only needs open delta. It's just a waste of money. All right, uh, a Y type configuration is a balance of load on both direction. And really, most of your Y-type transformers are self-contained. Now, I'm gonna probably wrap up through this here. It's just, I wanted you guys to get the basic of idea. One is, how many transformers are in each configuration? Three, three, and two. The situations that you use them for. And in the first part of the chapter, they said, well, if I have a self-contained three-phase transformer, so, we saw the bank that we saw before of, uh, let me get unshared here. Hold up, hold up. Damn it. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Dang it. Uh, what would you use uh, open delta for? Uh, all right. Okay. If I, and uh, I know my screen's getting kind of uh, cluttered here. Hold on one second. Let me change colors. It's the balance of one phase and three phase. I just don't know what open delta is. Uh, when you're looking at open delta in the situation, uh, and really, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, uh, back in the 60s and 70s, a lot of your homes came with, all I need is single phase power in it, but a lot of the uh, air conditioning companies and people who were construction, constructing homes, well, the only piece of three phase equipment that you need there is the AC unit. And uh, it did make it more cost effective as far as you're using it and your consumption of it. So instead of building a three-phase closed delta bank where I have a high amount of three-phase load, 
I'd build an open delta bank where I have just one piece. Just the AC unit is, is using three phase. All three phase basically? Sir? So just a small three phase? Uh, well, it's just two transforms. I'm taking an open delta bank and we'll get into this later. I'm taking an open del a closed delta bank and I'm removing one transformer. I don't need that extra amount of uh, three phase power coming out of the transformers. I only need a small amount to run one AC unit, okay? This one, the, the delta, closed delta right here, man, I'm running so much three phase that I'm gonna need the benefit of all three transformers to get the amount of power out of this bank in this situation to run all the motors in that complex. You don't see, Professor V can attest to this, you don't see very many closed delta banks anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them have moved over to the Y configuration, for one. Closed delta is really meant for specific locations. Uh, camp for, I mean, I just keep using that one all the time. It's because you got lights in offices and lights in buildings. But man, every piece of equipment that's running out there is three-phase delta. It's motors. Mm -hmm. High, high, high amount of motor load out there. Mm -hmm. uh, another good situation it's since been torn down was AVX. AVX Corporation used a lot of uh, baking in making their uh, electronics out there. And all of their kilns were three-phase closed delta because the load for three-phase Delta was so, so high out there. And when you get a kiln that goes up to 6,000 degrees, it takes a lot of three-phase power to do that. Does that help answer your question? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Thanks for asking. It. Okay, so I think that brings us up to speed of where, how far I want to get uh, thus far. And remember, in the first part of the chapter, I did want to show this real quick. Uh, Get back over to here. Uh, let's go three phase pole mount. Got a little keyboard dyslexia going on there. Three phase pole mount transformer. You got that, V? Okay. Let's see, we go. Did not pull mount UMT transformer. <clears throat> Is you'll see transformer banks here, and here's here you go. Here's what I'm looking for. All right, the difference between a bank and a self-contained three-phase pull mount transformer. All right, a bank consists of what? Three different transformers. All right, a self-contained transformer, as you see in this 45 kVA right here on the left-hand side, this could be also questions. I need to share your screen. Well, that would, probably, that would probably help. Thank you very much. Appreciate, appreciate you keeping a tab on me, Mr. V. Yeah. So I will go back here, get this out of the way. You should be seeing uh, my browser screen. Yeah. Okay. So knowing the difference between a bank, all right, that's a bank of how many transformers? Three transformers. Three, tra three transformers. So, I mean, we're not going to get into it now. I know it's at least delta or y. It's not open delta. Because del open delta has how many transformers? Two, two, two. So that you know, that's a quick identifier right there. That is a bank of transformers there on the right hand side. Now, they, that, you, sorry. go ahead, ask your question. What is that sleeve on top of the bushing there? That gray uh, sleeve. Wildlife protector. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Squirrels or anything get up there, they'll make contact with the sleeve and not the wire that's underneath. Okay. All right. They do also make. Now, this is the one on the right hand side not the left hand side wow that's a small picture <clears throat> i'm getting smaller 
Yep, they is. also make now the one on the on the right hand side. That's a that's a pad mounted one. The one on the left hand side. They also make a self contained three phase pull mount transformer, and that's the one on the left. So really, all three transformer cores are in one case. How many primary bushings do I have? Three. Three. All right, how many secondary bushings do I have? Four. Four, Four secondary bushings. That lets you know it's three phase. And they're using, when you see that bond like that, that copper bond that's on the left hand side, they're using that neutral bushing for the primary ground. So that's why, why? That's how I can tell real quick. The problem is, is if you have a failure on this transformer, you're, using, you're losing all three at one time. The whole thing has to be changed out. Whereas on a transformer bank, such as this, if I have a failure of one transformer in that bank, I only have to change out one. It's a little bit more cost effective. Okay, Professor V? Yep. I think that'll wrap it up for the day. That was a good start into three phase. Yeah. Uh, why don't you give, guys, why don't you give Professor V and I about, it's 10.15 now, give us about 10 minutes. We'll get our stuff squared away and together, and we'll start reviewing for the uh, test this afternoon. So take about 10 minutes. All right. B, do you want to be the copier? I can. Okay. You know what I'll do here? What's that? I'll bring up the Word documents and I'll just put a star beside the one that, ones that I'm using. Okay. And then just save all of them and go back and we'll just enter them into D2L. Is it all right if I cut my camera off during break? Sure, sure. Handful. <clears throat>